Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my very cold card making space. Welcome to the frozen north. Anyway, I am part of a blog hop today for the Simon Says Stamp Sweetheart release. And it's kind of a combo of this release and the Smitten release that came out in the middle of December. It's kind of combining things. And today is day two of blog hops. They already had another blog hop with a bunch of fabulous makers with tons of inspiration. And then today is day two. So tons of inspo. Loads of fabulous makes. I will have links and all the info and all the things in the description box below the video. And yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist the charming Daisy. Um, it's kind of blown out in the floor, but you know, wafer dye. I combined it with one of the little mushroom wafer dye sets that I just love. I couldn't resist. And yeah, did exactly what I said I was going to do with one of the stencils, crackle paste. And then I decided to do watercolor with Simon's Positively Saturated Inks. I've done that in actually many videos in the past. It's fun. It's fun. So if you keep watching, I will show you guys how I made these cards. Let's get right to it, shall we? I started with some Canson XL watercolor paper. And right now these panels are roughly like four and a half by six. I'm going to trim them down when I'm done, like everything's dry, etc. So I've got these pieces of watercolor paper and I'm using the Heart Blooms stencil and I'm applying crackle paste over it. Not applying it perfectly, not applying it edge to edge, just putting some paste down. Still keeping it fairly thin, only because that just means it'll dry faster. <laughs> but you can really amp up the texture by, you know, leaving some thicker areas. You can tap your palette knife after you've, you know, applied the paste before removing the stencil and create all kinds of fun, like real, really thick and, and gritty texture and stuff. But I just generally apply it pretty thin clean off my stencil, clean off my palette knife. I set those backgrounds aside to dry. While they were drying, I die cut just a bunch of scraps of watercolor paper using the Charming Daisy wafer dye. Love it. I die cut it multiple times. It's so adorable. I love it. And I'm taking those die cut pieces and sticking them to a stick and stamp mat. When I'm doing things like uh, watercolor and whatnot of little die cuts. That's where I like my stick and stamp mats. You can see mine are horribly stained and I'm fine with it. When I'm done with them, I just rinse them underwater and let them air dry. That's, that's it. That's all I do. So I'll come back to that in a second. After I was done all my die cutting and I some, you know, laid out all my little die cuts, these backgrounds were dry. So they're all crackly and fabulous. And to do the backgrounds, I'm using the, the newest ink trio that Simon just released of ink colors and it's mist, dew, and raindrop. Although I could have done all this with one. I stuck all three on here and I used all three, but with the darkest shade and I, when I layer it, it's kind of irrelevant, but still they're pretty colors. So I just smushed them onto one of my little plastic palettes and I have, you can't see it on camera, but I have a big, uh, just a big jar of water and I'm just using a big paintbrush. I apply the water first on this second and on this second panel, like my brush was still dirty with the ink, but it, it doesn't matter. Applying the, the water first just lets everything kind of move more. And then I just slapped on the color like I'm showing. Just slap it on. D nothing fancy. Um, yeah, it, just let it do its thing. And then I'm setting that aside, letting those dry. I will come back to those backgrounds once I'm done with these. So while those are drying, I'm now going to use more of the positively, positively saturated inks to do my watercoloring. You could use distress inks for this, oxide inks, actual watercolors. I've shown all variations of this over the years. And for me, it just depends on what mood I'm in. <laughs> yeah, the new inks came out and I was like, "Ooh, I love these colors. Why not do the whole thing with inks? That, that, that's what d made my decision for me. So I will link, list and link all of the specific colors I used. But for the greenery on these little daisies, I was using um, Perfection, which is the lighter shade of green, and then Artichoke. And I actually added a bit of Raindrop. Oh, it was Raindrop Dew and Mist, by the way. I don't know if I even said that for the background. Anyway, 
and I put a tiny little bit of, I added a little bit of raindrop because I do like adding like kind of aqua blue colors sometimes when I'm doing greens I just I love that look so you can see I just had just a little bit of it just because so I paint the there's a separate leaf and then the stem with the leaf with those three shades and I'm just using a slightly smaller brush this time. I'll have both the brushes links. These are Zen, like Royal and Langnickel Zen brushes. I use like a size 12, yeah, to do the background. And then for all the rest of this, I'm using like a size 6. For the daisies themselves, I wanted to keep them white. And still wanted to add a little bit, though, of like shading and definition to them. So I smushed a little bit of charcoal ink onto my palette. And then added a good amount of water with that so it's watered down a little bit and then just kind of painted it more towards kind of the, the the base of each petal and that was it just very simple so after that I just needed to paint the flower centers and for that I used um, a couple shades of yellow which were sunbeam and citrine and then I also used allspice and just went lightest to darkest so I added a bit of sunbeam and then I dropped in a bit of citrine and then I took that allspice and kind of like tapped my brush onto these just to give it a little more texture and then move that aside so that all everything could dry while that was drying I'm working on my little my little mushrooms love it I have a playlist on my channel using a different mushroom die set from Simon Says Stamps it's also my favorite this one is one that came out a few months ago I forget now I like this one too I don't know what it is honestly I don't know what is my little fixation on little mushroom wafer dyes and stamps. I just, they're cute. <laughs> so anywho, I had them all, all the pieces from this. This is the, yeah, tall, tall mushrooms little set. And had them all laid out on another stick and stamp mat that you can see, again, very stained. Don't care. It's, it's fine. Um, and I used woodsy. Yeah, woodsy ink was for the like kind of undersides of the mushrooms and the little stems. And then for the, the mushroom caps, I used uh, punch, sangria, and cabernet. So nice, these kind of muted, sort of muted, like red shades. And worked my way lightest to darkest. Again, just slap the color on. And then let those dry. So once I've got all the color on all the pieces and I'm happy with that, set that aside to dry, I'm now coming back to these backgrounds that are mostly dry at this point. I really wanted these backgrounds to be like pretty intense, kind of moody. That's just what I wanted the backgrounds to be. So I just added another layer and I just used the two darkest shades of that ink trio for this. So that's the raindrop and mist. I think is the darkest is that what it is I've got they're they're brand new so it always takes me a little while to remember which one's which I think no mist and raindrop are the two darker shades dew is the lightest so I'm using mist and raindrop and just again just slapping the color on you know just full-on slapping it on I want it to sink in in between all those little crackly bits from the crackle paste love I'll show that like close up at the end of the video and I just, again, I wanted those backgrounds to be kind of dark and moody. So I set them aside again to let them dry. And while those were drying, all of my little die cuts are now dry. So it's just a matter of assembling them. These were super easy to assemble. The floral pieces, you just layer them together. Stick the, the little center right on there. And then um, you can choose whether or not you want to use that extra little... Um, little leaf and I did so you just adhere it wherever you want on the stem adhere the floor of the stem that's it simple I love it I love that's I think another reason why I love like little die cuts and stuff like this where I genuinely do not have to put in any thinking <laughs> it's like oh this just makes sense I don't have to stop and think or anything it's like doot 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 stick it together done so I just went through and assembled all of these so I did two flowers for each card front and then for all my mushrooms, I die cut a few extras, so I had a whole bunch. But this is another one of those tasks where it's like you just kind of get mindless. Like I put on, you know, a podcast or, you know, a show, something, and I'm just zoned out and it's just in assembly mode. And you just one after the other after the other. It's just simple. So the same with the little mushrooms. Super easy to assemble these. Stick on the, the, little, the little stem and then pop on the little mushroom cap. 
done. If you want to zhuzh these up a little bit more, you could pop the little cap on with some like foam adhesive, you know, give it extra dimension, things like that. But I generally find more often than not, I always, almost always just assemble them like as is with adhesive, I'm good to go. So got everything assembled. By this point, my backgrounds are dry. So now I'm trimming these down to slightly smaller than an A2 card front. These ended up being, I think I trimmed them down to about four inches by five and a quarter, just so that the card base will give it a little bit of a frame. So I just used my guillotine trimmer and trimmed all of these panels down. And then um, off camera, I figured out like my layout so that card front there on the right, everything's already been adhered because I just sit and fiddle and yeah not there's nothing to film with that because I'm just mucking around and more often not my head's in the way or you know it's just whatever so once I've got my layout figured out though then I can just copy that on the next one so I'm adhering everything again with just craft hacky glue when you're adhering on top of um, any sort of like texture paste especially glitter paste but the crackle paste as well you want to use a strong adhesive and either a good liquid adhesive or things like foam squares, foam tape, etc. Just something good and strong that will actually like really hold things down because you've just you've got an uneven surface and then you know all the little bits of the paste sticking up, etc. So I just adhere everything with the craft hacky glue. And then splatter, of course. I'm gonna do quite a bit of splatter. I'm using just white gouache. So I put a little bit on my palette. The one little blob I added just a little bit of water to, the other one I added more water to. And then I'm going to use my little fan brush and I have my backgrounds in just my splat box just to kind of contain <laughs> some of the splatter. And the gouache that I added less water to, I am splattering more on the little die cut images. So these will still also dry back like the splatter will dry back because it is gouache. So it will kind of absorb some of the ink color that it's on top of and it'll soften. And then the blob that I added more water to, I mixed it all together. So this is much more watered down. Right as I'm splattering it, it looks very white. Like I've got like white splatter everywhere. It is going to dry back significantly and it's going to end up looking more like just like water watermarks because there's a lot more water with the gouache and that's what I was going for. I wanted this to add just texture and not to look like, not to look like these little flowers and mushrooms were growing up here right now, like in the middle of a blizzard. No. So it's just a matter of how much water you add to it. So I went heavy with the splatter because I knew it was going to dry back and you can already see like a corner of it there. It's not white anymore. You know, it's kind of the color of the background because it absorbed a lot of that ink and there was a lot of water in it. So the other, my main sentiments are the uh, CZ Design Reverse Bestie sentiment strips. So I trimmed those down with my trimmer as well. And then for the insides of my cards, my cards are going to be top folding A2 white note cards. So four and a quarter by five and a half. And I've got my card bases and I just stuck them to one of my waffle flower grip mats just to hold the card base and the stencil in place. And I used one of my, one of my little pieces of post-it tape that I just keep stuck on top of my die cut machine because I will reuse these until there's nothing left of it. And I just use that to mask off where the score line is so that I don't add any stenciling or you know smears or anything past the score line of the card and then I use that same stencil that's the heart blooms stencil and the lightest shade of that ink trio so the dew ink right yes <laughs> I had to remind myself I have them like stacked up right beside me so I used the lightest shade of ink and a blending brush and I was also like tapping off the blending brush on the inside of the lid there because I wanted this to be soft because I write, you know, you need to be able to write over it. So you don't want to use like a super dark, intense color because then that would be very, very difficult to write a message to the recipient over it. So lightest shade of ink was tapping it off and then just lightly blended that over the stencil with a blending brush. And then I'll get that whole pattern on there and you know the color but it's still soft enough that it'll be easy to write over with like a ballpoint pen so i did that to the insides of both of these card bases and then um removed the post it tape removed them from my grip mat wiped off the stencil etc and then on the insides of both of these cards i am going to adhere one of those little sentiment strips that i had trimmed down and on the inside of both of them, it's just going to say, I appreciate you so much. So I adhered those into place with craft hacky glue. 
and then I'm going to adhere the card fronts to the card bases also with craft tacky glue and with things like this that have you know warped quite a bit between the amount of like liquid and everything I'd added to them when I was watercoloring the backgrounds I just add the adhesive stick it to the card base and then I stick it under something heavy which generally is my misty you know and if I feel I really need to it need to I'll stack like other things on top to really hold it down and just let that glue dry so I did all that, let the glue dry, and then for the sentiments I'm sticking on the front, I had trimmed them down and then cut them apart so they weren't on one line. And then I just used one of my black markers. This is just my Memento Tuxedo black marker, the same one I've been using for years. I just used the brush tip of the marker and I run that along the edges of these um, pieces because that will cover up that exposed white cardstock and it just makes them look a little more seamless. It's just a little finishing touch just it's quick simple gets a job done so after I did that I'm gonna pop these into place with just some thin uh, thin black foam squares so got those on the back and then I'm going to adhere these onto both of these um, card fronts and then as a final added little bit of embellishment because they were sitting here and they're they, they matched perfectly um, the new mist embellishment mix from Simon's release. The colors were just perfect. They kind of almost disappear on camera right now, but in real life, you know, they catch the light and they just, they give that little extra bit of, you know, almost sparkle, not quite, you know, but they catch the light and it's pretty. So I figured out sort of my placement with these and stuck more than I normally do onto here because they do kind of blend so nicely into the background so they're not super distracting you know and then once I was happy with the placement I just picked these up with my little embellishment wand and then put down little dabs of craft tacky glue and adhered them into place and then same thing just gotta let the glue dry and these cards will be complete so I'll be able to show you guys sort of close up the the little crackly bits of the embossing paste and then just the shine of the little confetti these were a lot of fun to make. And yeah, you don't need any special watercolors or anything like that if all you've got is stamping inks. As long as they are water reactive, and you can always test that out by just smush your ink onto a non-porous surface, like a ceramic plate even, you know, glass cutting mat, whatever, and then add some water. And if it immediately like moves and pools around it, it's water reactive. If the ink just sits there and doesn't really do anything, not water reactive. So hope that helps. And like I said in the intro, I will have all the info and the supply list, etc. That'll be in the description box below the video for anyone that is interested to check out. Thank you all so much for watching, thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.